Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Unreal Engine 4. So recently there was a developer's interview in Korea about Unreal Engine 4 and there is a video about it. So I have left the link in the description below if you want to watch the video for yourself. However, the developers do speak in Korean and there is Chinese subtitles. So for my Chinese viewers out there, you can just watch the video and then just read everything for yourself. However, if you do not read Chinese, don't worry, I have made a TLDR over here. So basically, the Chinese server is going to be getting a Reborn World server, which is basically the Frontier server, but for the Chinese players. On this Reborn World server, we will all get a fresh start, so you know none of your gear will transfer over, you start at level 1, and max level will be 45. The Reborn World server is considered a test server, and may be wiped after the test phase is over. I'm not sure about the third point. Um, it might be wiped, it might not be wiped. I'm, I'm hearing different sides of the story on this. But either way, it is considered a test server. And then the fourth point is they've added new maps as well as a new upgrade system in the Reborn world to test things. So this includes the weapon upgrade system as well as the accessory upgrade system. They said that they're going to be testing a few different changes for that. As for the fifth point, once Unreal Engine 4 is completed, they will proceed with final transfers from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4. So that means all of our existing characters, the characters that we've invested on right now, will be transferred to Unreal 4 Engine when they have completed the Unreal Engine 4 testing and all of that jazz. Finally, for point six, all of this information is about the Chinese servers. So as for the NA and EU servers, we most likely are going to be skipping the whole test server thing and we're just going to jump straight into Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4 once it's ready. So basically it depends on how fast the Chinese server and the Korean server are able to test things and fix things before we get Unreal Engine 4. So I originally predicted that we'll be getting Unreal Engine 4 early of next year of 2020. However, because the Chinese server doesn't get the Reborn World test server until 2020, it actually might be delayed till mid of 2020 for us in the West. Uh, not 100% sure, really depends on how fast they fix things and how long they need to test certain things. So that covers all of the Chinese server stuff. So what's new and what are they working on with this Unreal Engine 4 update? So I've listed 12 things over here and I'm just going to go through them. But the first point is they want to add mounts into the game. So other than just regular wind striding and wind walking, they want to add mounts into the game. And later on, I'm going to go into more detail on why they said this. So Unreal Engine 4 is scheduled to be released in 2020. This is the final version. So the one that we will be getting in the West. So that is their goal. And this is stated by the Korean developers themselves. Um, the third point is they're trying to keep environments and character models as close to the originals as possible while upscaling it and making it prettier in the Unreal Engine 4 engine. So this basically means that they want to keep things similar. So for example, your character design. You spend a lot of time creating your character and perfecting the way it looks right now. And so when your character gets transferred to the Unreal Engine 4, they want it to look similar or almost the same, and they don't want it to be too drastically changed. So as well as the environment and dungeons, they want things to look similar, but just better, just upscaled basically. Point four is combat has been improved and they've added more particle effects to make you look more powerful and feel more powerful. Um, that's another thing that they've spent a lot of time on. Point five is they want to add a weather system. However, the weather system's not completed yet, but it's high up in their priority list. They want dynamic weather, so that's always different whenever you go into a zone, because then it might be sunny one day, it might be storming one day, it might be raining, it might be snowing, and there's just a dynamic weather system that they're working on. Point six is there's a huge focus on open world PvP and PvE. So this is where the mounts come in. So with the introduction of Unreal Engine 4, they really want to showcase it in an open world environment where there's a lot of people running around, there's a lot of PvE elements, and there's a lot of PvP elements in it. So in order to let people feel and understand the scale of the open world, they want to add in mounts so that you can just travel faster and it actually feel how big the world actually is. So that is why they want to introduce mounts into the game, because open world is one of their biggest focuses with the Unreal Engine 4 update. 
The new class will not be introduced in Unreal Engine 4, so we will not be getting the new class with the Unreal Engine 4 update. This may be different on the NA slash EU servers because we will be getting this update a lot later than the East, but I'll let you know if we get any news about that. Point 8 is similar to what I said before, it is that the equipment upgrade system has been revised and improved or modernized. So they do understand that MMOs right now is in a kind of iffy situation because a lot of players nowadays don't have as much time to invest into MMOs. So they do understand that having to farm for 3 months, 4 months in order to upgrade one piece of gear and only gain like a 5% or a 10% DPS increase is a little bit excessive. And so they are trying out new things, they're trying to revise it to make it modernize it to make it a little bit faster on the upgrades. So what they want to achieve is something similar to more incremental upgrades. So you upgrade gear more often, but each piece of gear that you upgrade maybe only gives you like a 2% DPS increase instead. So at least every week you feel like you're getting stronger or every month you feel like you're getting stronger instead of just waiting and farming a long time like two, three, four months and getting that one upgrade. But because you've invested so much time and so much effort into that one upgrade, when you see that 5% upgrade or that 10% DPS increase, it doesn't feel as rewarding because it feels like, wow, I've been farming for so long, I've invested so much, but I only gained this much DPS. So they want to try to revise this system and try to make it feel more rewarding for your time. Point nine is they're adding a good and evil system. So I don't, they didn't really go into much detail about this, but I'm assuming it might be similar to something like BDO, where you have like, you there's open world PVP, and if you randomly start killing innocent people, you your name starts turning red or something, and then people will start hunting you down for rewards. It might be something along those lines. They didn't really go into much detail, so I don't know what exactly that means. Point 10 is high-end PC players will experience much smoother gameplay. So this just comes with the territory of Unreal Engine 4. Basically, as long as you have a good graphics card, it's going to utilize that graphics card a lot more, while currently with Unreal Engine 3, it utilizes your CPU a lot more. So if you have a high-end PC with the Unreal Engine 4 upgrade, we will probably get better performance. Point 11 is the Unreal Engine 4 Frontier server is scheduled to release on December 19 for Korea and early 2020 for the Chinese server. So last but not least, and probably one of the most important ones, is that they're working with the new engine, so Unreal Engine 4, and they're really putting a strong emphasis on game optimization. And they also specifically said that this includes actively working on solving external network problems. So they have identified that their server code and their networking thing is a very big issue and they are putting a lot of emphasis on trying to solve these issues as well as game optimization. And that pretty much covers the entire interview with the developers. If I did miss anything, please do let me know in the comment section below. But this is what I got out of it from watching the six minute interview. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, I would appreciate a subscribe. Or if you want to go the extra mile, please consider becoming a member. Speaking about members, I'd like to thank Kevin, Zillantex, Overgamers, Yatogami, Arisoya, Gonzola, Jeremy Chen, Nayana, Pearlstyle, Lina Ren, Toots McGee, Solar Hero, ST Sintu, as well as Key for supporting the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! What can I say except you're welcome For the heals, the boosts, the rest